The topic today is entitled Too Little. Too Little. And most of the things that we will discuss will be taken from the words of the prophet Isaiah, one of the greatest uh, prophets of all time, who started telling about the coming of a serpent who will redeem the nations in exact details, so much details that the people from the time of Jesus can refer to him as the Messiah. And for us, even this generation, those prophecies of Isaiah makes us sure that Jesus is indeed the Messiah because the prophecies are so detailed that uh, it cannot be mistaken. And amazingly, it happened 700 plus years before even Jesus Christ was born. But we, before we go to that, um, remember when we were having the adoration here, I told Brother Martin, Brother Marcos, that uh, I am having a sense from the Lord because when the host was put in the, what's they call it? Monstrous. I felt something strange and I uh, very quickly uh, had this emotion and I cried. I don't know why, but uh, in a while, the sense from the Lord is that your title, your topic is too little and actually the objective is for us, Focus for Christ, to realize that there is so much work to do. We may even think that we have done so much, but in fact, we have done so little. And now I came to it came to my mind, and this is what made me cry. It's because <clears throat> from the Philippines we have a lot of members there. We have done so many countries. And when we came here, oh, this is uh, India. Pardon me for saying relatively, this is still a small community. But the Lord tell me, told me. No? <laughs> Maybe you have the wrong perspective. And I think I have the wrong perspective. Because brothers and sisters, it is not the number that the Lord is looking for the CFC community to deliver to His own. It's not that. It is the heart. It is the heart. Imagine we have a very vast land here to present something of the whole 1.2 billion population are Christians and only a part of that is Catholic. For a mission to be set ablaze, it's like a bonfire. You should have a lot of firewood all set ablaze in order to produce heat Light. But you hear, you're a few firewood scattered in different states. But for many years you survive to keep your flame ablaze. And for that, brothers and sisters, I was mistaken, you are not too little in the eyes of God. Amen. I honor you, brothers and sisters, because yesterday when we had a first session with our brothers and sisters in uh, Kerala, we learned that some of you traveled 37 hours from your own place to reach here. I think the shortest was 20 hours. So, brothers and sisters, I just ask you, what made you do that? You left your jobs, you left your family, you left the opportunity to have a good rest this weekend, but you're here. What made you do that? <laughs> that in 
itself is a manifestation of the heart. And it's not a small or a little heart. Brothers and sisters, I see in you big hearts within me that will set the CFC India community once more ablaze. Amen? Amen. This is a rendezvous. You know, uh, in the Philippines, whenever we go to the barrio for the thing we can do it, we will always remember that it is our rendezvous the Lord. It has happened uh, thousands of years uh, during the time of Moses. So whenever the Lord signals to Moses in the dream that I will give the message, he will go to Mount Zion and then he will come back and he will stay in the tent and the tent will glow. Which means there is a message carried by Moses Come around the tent and listen. And that is your rendezvous with the Lord. Where the message will be uh, heard through his prophets and the blessing will be rejected to all those around. So brothers and sisters, with a big heart, who came from faraway lands, traveling 37 hours, you are here for a trip. Because God has given you a powerful message that will even change our life and our mission. To thank you honestly of all the 10 weekend retreats that I have attended in my life in CFC. This past weekend, this weekend retreat, the message be a sermon in light to all nations. Humility and obedience is for me the most powerful message that I receive in all the CFCs we can be friends. So congratulations brothers and sisters for here for a great trip from God's message and God's blessings. Uh, maybe I should in introduce myself a little bit uh, and I will make it a part of my sharing to emphasize to emphasize the point. I have worked for 32 years, and uh, I'm now guess how how old? I'm now 64 years old, and I have worked for 32 years just grinding stones and making it into cement. But not too far from that. We are already serving in the community for almost 30 years. It's 29 years, growing 30. So, still almost half of our lives uh, we're serving, we're serving the Lord. Uh, one time, one of our friends asked, uh, You're serving the parish, you serve the sector, a province, and a country. You must be tired. What keeps you going? What makes you do this? <laughs> and you are jobless. <laughs> Actually, I'm jobless. I'm retired. But never tired of serving in the mission of the gospel of Christ. Amen? Amen. The reason why we're still here, we never get tired, is because. We believe that this is our calling. The mission of purpose for Christ is our calling. And I guess, and I believe, I'm maybe 90, 95% right that it is the same calling that made you leave your homes, travel for 20, 37 hours in the country. Am I right? It is your calling, right? Yeah, yes. Shouldn't we thank the Lord for that? <laughs> I, I think we should thank the Lord for calling us. Because God has raised up, us up from our own paralysis. I have my own version of paralysis. 
Imagine 32 years working in the corporation. The first half of that was a good chunk of daily temptation. Uh, I cannot describe my life and even compare to what I'm doing now. Uh, it's all about working, struggling to reach the top of uh, the ladder, even uh, if uh, I have to sacrifice all my values. I have vices, drinking, smoking. Once in a while, secretly. <laughs> you know, I will not mention that. But uh, for the guys, yeah, it's a great temptation. And I am so honored that uh, some people have been used by the Lord to change the course of our life. Brothers and sisters, I would like you to post a little while. And remember who invited you to the Christian Life Program. Honor them. I think the point here is uh, we have to honor them. Because our lives as a missionary, it takes a lot of uh, trials, but it has to begin with a decision. And these household heads, these facilitators that we have, they're the ones used by the Lord as instruments so that we can say yes to the Lord. Alright, the thing for this year is being a servant and light to all nations. Servant. Uh, sometimes it seems very familiar for us to say that uh, I am a servant. I, I serve in the ministry, I'm a missionary. Uh, a very a word that is so loaded but often taken lightly. It is a familiar concept. Its true essence is often overlooked. Today, God is prompting us to revisit the profound significance which leads to our team being a servant and light to all nations. Isaiah 49, 6 once contained something like this. It is too little for you to be my servant to raise the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. Brothers and sisters, uh, just a bit of background again about Isaiah. Um, Going back to the bow men and women, Isaiah, being one of the greatest prophets of those times, believed that he was used by the Lord. And the Lord, for him to be an effective proclaimer, a messenger of the Lord, has to be transformed into a two-edged sword and a polished arrow. And I think he's trying to convey to the to the people of those times, having called us to a mission will transform us to a sword and a polished arrow. And it will be aimed at something great. Really. Something not too little. Something beyond raising up the tribes of Jacob and restoring only the survival of Israel. In this uh, part, it draws inspiration from Isaiah 49 verse 6. And the book of Isaiah is sometimes referred to as the fifth gospel. But how can it be the because it was uh, it is a book that was written way, way uh, before Christ was born. But it is because of its significance in the role of prophesying about the birth, life, identity, and the salvific, salvific work of Jesus Christ. 
Isaiah 49 can be understood also as the song of Jesus Christ, the suffering servant. Narrated to us the story of his life and mission here on earth. And his life extends as an invitation to each and every one of us to accept and share his identity as God's chosen servant. You know, during the time of Isaiah, he was telling about repentance. He was giving a warning to the people of those times to repent and turn away from their wicked ways. But many times they disregarded the warning of Isaiah. The warning of Isaiah is not just about a message of doom. He always balances his message with a message for repentance and a message of hope. And that message of hope is the coming of the suffering servant, Jesus Christ. So it's always it's always like that. And several times the, the Israelites would not listen to him, disregard uh, his warning, and then they will be conquered, they will suffer in the hands of the Egyptian, but then Isaiah will keep on repeating, there's the Lord he wants to give you another chance. A new Jerusalem is coming. The suffering servant is coming to save you. And when he comes, there will be no failing, there will be no suffering, there will be no God. He keeps on saying that during this time. And that is exactly our tale for this year. The prophecy of Sir of Isaiah, be a servant and light to the world.